Hello, welcome to another Thunkable tip. My name is Donal and in this video we're going to build a settings application. So we're going to use the sliders here, a new component introduced by Thunkable, to uh, turn on and off some sound effects and the, uh, the vibrate motor as well. So at the moment they're both on. If we go back to our previous page, um, we can click the button here. It says sound effects are true and vibrate is true. And if I hold my phone up to the microphone you should be able to hopefully hear both of those yep and um, what i can do then is i can go into my settings again if i go back to my settings then the sound effect was quite loud there but we can turn the sound effect off altogether and we can go back and if you listen closely then hopefully you should be able to hear the vibrate motor there as well one more time then what we can do is go back into the settings there you can see that by default or from the last time let's say vibrate motor is on let's swap those around so we only have the sound effect going back then to our app this could be our game or anything like that and we just have the sound effect here like that um yeah and finally i guess the last combination of that is to turn uh, everything off and you can see that the previous settings are saved and now if we go back to our main page sound effects is false vibrate is false and clicking the button does absolutely nothing as we've shown it to do Okay, so let's have a look at uh, how we go about designing this application. There are two different screens, there's databases and there's sound components. So let's just jump right into the design. Now ahead of time, I have downloaded a icon here for the uh, settings button. And uh, I've also got that sound effect that, uh, that you heard earlier. Uh, you probably can't hear that there, but uh, that's the little coin sound or the sound effect. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna create and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own heading. So in screen one, I'm going to get rid of the status bar. I'm going to get rid of the title bar. And I'm going to replace those then with a horizontal arrangement like that. Let's set the height to be, I think about 40 pixels is more than enough. And the width then will be fill parent like this. Uh, we can use any background color that we like. Um, I'm going to get a little bit lighter actually. And just so we can see the black text against the background. And then what I need is the uh, label to tell us what page we're on. So let's get a label. And we need a button then to actually show the uh, little settings icon that's gonna allow us to move back and forth between screen one and screen two. So let's set our label here to be, let's set it to be fill parent, I suppose, uh, for the width. Then what we'll do is we'll make the button, we'll make that a square icon instead. So let's make that 32 by 32 is usually a fairly um, kind of accessible, let's say, fairly good height. And we'll delete the default text like that. And uh, what I'll do then is I'll change the main thing then is the image property here on the button. So that can be my settings wheel like that. Okay, that looks good. Everything now is kind of um, floating up to the top of the screen here. So to do that, what we'll do is change to, to fix it then. We will change the, horizon, uh, the vertical alignment to be center. So now everything goes into the middle of the screen like that. On label one then, we can make our text a little bit bigger. Let's use the Roboto font face since it's there already. Uh, let's make the type 24 is more than enough, I think. And we can use then uh, page one or screen one or something like that. Like that. Okay, so that's our own title bar uh, completed. On the screen itself then, um, what we're going to do is add in a label, and that's going to be our kind of our status label um, to tell us whether or not the sound effect or the uh, motor should be buzzing. And then we're going to have a button in the middle of the screen. Put the button here in the middle of the screen to play the, the sound effects. So let's um, let's change the height of this one here a little bit. I think so change the height to maybe thirty percent. Okay, cool. So that's not too bad. Button one and then button two then should just be click me. Like this. Click me. Okay. And um, so that's going to play our sound and it's also going to buzz the motor. Now, kind of conveniently, I suppose, if we go to media, we can get both of those from the sound component. So that's that. And uh, now that'll allow us to buzz the motor and to play a sound. And um, we can see here we've got a source uh, property. And we'll set that to our WAV file or MP3 file or any sort of sound file that you have. And the minimum interval then, how much high for. Uh, the next thing then, the final thing I suppose that makes us 
or gives us the ability then to um, communicate back and forth between pages. If we go into storage, we have a tiny DB. So that's going to allow us to save the settings on screen two, and then also to uh, read the settings then on screen one. So in our blocks editor, then when we click the settings button, that's this one here, we're going to go into control and we're going to open up uh, screen two like this. There's lots of more code to be done on screen one, but uh, let's go ahead and screen two. Let's go ahead and create screen two and um, add, the, add the design, add the settings, and more importantly, get um, familiar then with uh, using the, the database. Okay, over on screen two, what we'll do is put everything into the center of the screen to keep my two um, sliders then close together. I'm going to use a vertical arrangement in the middle of the screen. We can set the width to be whatever we want. That's fine for the moment. I'm going to set the um, horizontal alignment on this one though to be right like this. Then uh, the new component then that was introduced during the week was the, the switch. I think I keep calling it the slider, uh, was the switch. So that allows us to switch things on and switch things off. Perfect then for a settings application like this. The top thing then that we're going to have, or the top uh, slider switch one, will be um, the sound effects. And switch two then, we're going to have the uh, vibration. Like that. Maybe we'll put in a bit of a space or something like that after it. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll put in a bit of space for a little bit of uh, padding, makes it a little bit neater. The other thing we'll do then is make the font slightly bigger, and this will make everything a little bit easier to reach. So on the design then, it kind of stretches them out a little bit. And again, just a reminder that this design view is only just a rough indication, a rough guide of what your app will look like. The best thing to do is actually test it out on your phone. So let's, while we're, doing, while we're working here, let's just um, test it out. Let's have a look at what it looks like on our phone. Now that we've got our um, phone open, our live testing app open, you can see that the um, buttons are not stretched or the switches aren't stretched at all, and that we can go back and forth. There's a nice little kind of ripple effect and slide effect and everything like that. Okay, so we've still got a few more components to add in to the uh, screen. What we'll do is go back to our designer and uh, add in the last few little bits of code. The last component then that we need to make this work, as we mentioned earlier, is the storage. Uh, in the storage folder, we're going to get tinydb1, and that's going to allow us to save the settings then uh, between both screens. Now that we have all of our design elements added in, we're ready to start coding it. So what will happen then is when the um, settings screen opens up, that's screen 2 dot initialize like this, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to change the, the toggle properties here. So they're uh, turned on like that. So it's either true or false. That's for switch 1 and for switch two. So these are either true or false. We could, if we wanted to kind of hard code them in, we could use these logic values like this. That's not actually what we're looking for though. What we want to do is use the get value here from tinyDB. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create a tag. Switch one is going to be for our sound effects. I'm going to call this uh, sounds. And we'll, by default, I suppose, for when we created the first time, um, and by default, what we'll do is uh, set it to be off like this. And we'll do the same thing then for the uh, vibrate. So choose a, a tag then that kind of describes what you're working with. And uh, that's what we want there. Okay, so what about the um, toggle events themselves? So the one that we're looking for here is when the switch is clicked. So when switch one is clicked, what we're going to do is store the, the state of the switch in our tiny db. So we use store the tag here then that we're going to use for our switch one. It's going to be sounds. I duplicate it here because I don't want any typos or anything like that, any mistakes introduced in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to store the value then uh, of turned on. So this is going to either be true or false. So that's all you need then for switch one. For switch two then, um, we're going to use the same type of code, but we're going to uh, use the uh, vibrates tag instead of the sounds tag, like that. Uh, if you want then, as I like to do with a lot of these apps, is I'm going to actually display those states as well in the screen. So we should be showing um, 
switch one here. In this case, nice thing here about reviewing the code is that we get to spot any little errors that should be. Switch two, obviously, here, and so should this one. Oh, gosh. So let's go and test this out and see what it looks like. So now over here, what we're able to do is turn on and off the sound effects, and we can turn on and off the uh, vibrate. Final thing to do then in our blocks is give the user some way of going back to the screen where they came from, and we'll do that by handling the back pressed event on the phone itself. So when the user clicks the back press button, we are going to open up uh, screen one, go to text, grab yourself a string like this, and put in screen one. Great, so that's it. That's all we need now for our um, screen two. Okay, so over in uh, screen one, now we have to add in the actual code then that will play the sound effects and vibrate the motor, depending on what the settings actually are. So the best time to do that is when the app or when the screen itself opens up. Uh, what we'll do here then is we will um, display all of the, the status in the label, and we'll also use our tiny DB to get the value from those tags. We'll use when screen one is initialized. Um, we're going to store these states, I suppose, in two different variables like this. So let's have one for uh, SFX, maybe for sound effects. And um, we will set that to be false was the default one that we had. And then the other one would be VM, maybe for the vibrate motor. Uh, that's going to be set to false as well. Then we have to actually read in the values from our uh, database. So sounds were, were the first tag and uh, vibrates was the second tag. And we'll do that then by going get value here. And we'll use sounds for the first one. We'll set it to false if uh, it's the first time that we're using the app. And we'll use vibrates then as the tag for the second one. And then just again for kind of um, testing reasons, really, we have this label here, label two, and we can display all of these properties in a, a label. So let's join together four strings of text should do. Three, four strings of text like that. Two of these will be strings, and uh, two of them then will be uh, the variables. So we'll get one of them here, get sound effects. Vibrate like this. Cool. Okay, uh, that's brilliant. Um, so sound effects then. Sound effects. Uh, colon and a space, let's say. Then we'll do backslash n to go onto a new line. We've seen that in the previous video. And vibrates. Colon and a space. True or false. Great. Um, so we have our uh, other button there. Um, and then the final thing to do is to actually play the sound or uh, buzz the motor. So when button two, that's the main button here, when that button is clicked, uh, we're gonna do two tests. I think that's the easiest way to do it. What we'll do is we'll check because these are true false values. If the sound effects is true, what we'll do is play the sound like this, and we can uh, duplicate this then as well. And then if a VM is true, if our vibrate motor is true, what we'll do is you can see in sound one, we have an option here to uh, vibrate the motor. So you have to put in a number here for milliseconds. Um, I'll just set mine to 250, 300, something like that, I think it's fine. Great, so now we can test the whole thing out. Let's go open up our settings uh, app like this. We can turn both of them on. And if we click back, we should see this um, is reflected in our menu there. The sound effects are true, vibrates is true. Click the button, and that was quite loud. Hopefully you'll be able to hear that. And um, what we'll do, go into the settings again, we'll turn off the sound effect, and um, go back, and they should be able to hear just the uh, vibrate. Okay, so uh, that's a really handy tip now on using um, the TinyDB component to store values that are accessible across multiple different screens. It's ideal for creating some sort of settings screen like this um, and hopefully then that's something that you can go and incorporate into your own apps. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, 
thanks to everybody who commented and got involved in the recent videos. It's been great reading your comments. If you have questions about the settings app that we've just built, uh, leave them in the comments below. If you have questions about your own app, if you have questions about something that you're working on, drop on over to the Thunkable community. That's community.thunkable.com and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them there. Keep on thinking, and I will see you in the next video.